What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Tally Spencer. Welcome back to the Show Some Love podcast. I got a special guest with me today. Y'all know the vibes. We, are, we He goes by the name of Ye Ali. What's up? What's up? How you doing? What's man? good, Ye? How you feeling? I'm amazing. It's good to see you. <laughs> good to be here. It's good to see you, too. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to have you as a guest on this episode. Honestly, it's going to be pretty straightforward, and I want to <laughs> jump right into it. I know this is a topic that you know people talk about all the time. It's something we've all probably dealt with, but whether or not you can be friends with your ex... Is that cool? Is that yeah. something you do? So we're going to jump right into that. Uh, <laughs> see, ex and somebody you dated is two different things. Okay. Ex and somebody you dated is two so different things. So I think it, it might be more difficult for one and not, uh, not the other, but I found it like someone I dated, we might not be cool, but yeah. I got an ex who I, like, we're like Interesting. We're pretty cool. So I think it varies on a person. And then what transpired? Because interesting, yeah, like when you get to know somebody, sometimes you find out the worst parts about them, right? Yeah, but yeah. there's a way to, to learn those parts about somebody without it having to be done to you. Yeah, you know. So it's That's like cool. sometimes if you knew them that way, it's like, oh, I, I saw your growth, and even though you didn't do it to me, I mm-hmm. I know you were like that, and we can still be cool, mm-hmm. you know. So for me, it's the opposite. I feel like, yeah, with people I'm casually dating, I have more of like an inclination to be friends with because we don't know each other deeply. Deep yeah, yeah, it's not that deep yet. <laughs> Versus if we have history, you know, a relationship where like we're in love and right. all of that, then that's where I'm like, it's hard for me to just be friends. Like, I don't know if I could really yeah. just go back from being lovey dovey to like, what's up, bro? All right, but what if you broke it off? If you still I broke couldn't it off? be cool with the, with the dude if you were like, if you were over it, and you to know what I'm saying, honest, what if you did it? Mm, no, to be honest, if if I were the one that broke things off, it's because I don't feel like we're a good match for each other mm. in our lives. So, you know, the main reasons that I feel like you would even want to be friends in the first place is like, for what? Like, what do yeah. we need to be friends for? Because we have a solid relationship. I don't know. I don't know. Do you have yeah. reasons that you feel like would make you want to be friends with somebody? <sighs> friends? Like... Sometimes you might have the same friend circle. Mm. And so circumstance and we all share the same people. So sometimes you don't want to make it awkward. And then sometimes nothing dramatic happened. Yeah. Sometimes nothing like crazy happened. There's no crazy story on why we broke up. It's just like, it just didn't work out. There's no real, you know. So mm-hmm. sometimes we don't harbor those feelings. It's easy to be cool still. But if one person feels the other person did something wrong, then of course I can understand it. Not. Yeah. But... I also don't make it a habit of, like, trying to be friends Mm -hmm. when I know you get into a relationship afterwards. So, like, sometimes people try to hold people hostage like that. Let's be friends. Like, you don't want to be friends. You're trying to just see if you could, you know. So, if your intentions are pure, Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. And then sometimes it's just not meant to be. And it's not a big deal either. Yeah. So, from your personal experiences, do you, are you friends with most of your exes? I don't count a lot. As exes. Okay. So, so just people casually dating. My ex, my real exes, like, we're all solid. You're all friends still? Not friends. Like, we don't kick it, but we got the same friend circle from, like, school, like high school, mm-hmm, college. Mm-hmm. And so everybody's successful doing their thing. We all keep tabs on each other yeah. just from being friends with our, you know, different friends. So it's, it's, it's great because everybody's in a good space and... We're, we can all say what's up to each other, see each mm-hmm. other at a party, catch up and be like, yo, I haven't seen you in a minute. Like, update me. Yeah, that's and beautiful. Be, and, and it'd be from a genuine place, you know? Yeah. So, and then sometimes when, we, when you're just casually dating, there's no substance. You don't, there's nothing to argue about or connect with. So mm-hmm. sometimes it's easier to cut ties with somebody you're just casually dating. Exactly. And not be friends or be friends and not really think about it. So right. It just depends on, I think. I guess it depends on like a lot of things, like the reason maybe too y- y'all broke up. I feel like it is possible to be friends with an ex if yes, you you know are mature about it and the reason that you guys broke up is just, okay, we have acknowledged you know we're not a good fit for each other. You know, maybe we'd be better off as friends. But... Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I think there's that line between like being platonic. Like what what do you do if you're still attracted to this person? You know, do that does that feeling ever go away? Yeah, realistically. I mean, it's just like not to ask you this question, mm-hmm. but in general, like have you ever worked with someone you were attracted with? To? Yeah. 
Of course. It wasn't like you were fighting, to, holding back from jumping on them. It was just, you're an adult. And, you know, so sometimes it's, you're around people you're attracted to. They might be in a relationship or y'all might have talked or it is, and the attraction can still be there. And sometimes it's a dope relationship built on, like, what do you call it? Like, that little aggression, like that unspoken, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know? So sometimes it, it's, it works for a relationship to have that, like, tension. Right. You know? Yeah. And Sometimes, like yeah. sexual tension. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Like, you saw our old boy on Good Morning America, like. Ooh. You can't you can't do have that much tension. Yeah, you gonna get kicked up. You gonna yeah, lose that's your an job. example <laughs> when you have an attraction for your coworker. Yeah. You don't hold back. <laughs> Man, I don't. Know. In that situation, it's like. So for them, you know, she could probably never be friends with her ex again. That's like out. it's over, done. That's like out. you sure. betrayed me. Yeah. There's no being friends if things don't work out after that. Uh, see, if like it is like that, then of course we would never be friends. Why would we? But also, they might be more mature than I said. They might be like, down yeah, the line. that's always like the ideal response. You know, like I would want to go into every situation thinking like, you know, we built a strong friendship <laughs> as the <laughs> as the foundation of it. But you but know, there's so that's many not people to meet. I feel like trying to be friends with all your exes is like petty. Why? Why do you think it's petty? It's so many more people to meet. So you just trying to, to force somebody to be your friend or force something. Not force, but like it, let's if say, I want to be your friend, that means yeah. we're not friends. If, what? if I want to be and we're not friends yet, you could want to be friends with me, and I could want to be friends with you. But if we're not on the same page, it's always gonna be we're gonna miss each other. Mm. You're gonna tell your friends, girl, he's still trying to, and I'm gonna tell my homies, like, I think she, and we both, you know, so. And then that could be fun too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we could be friends and not kick it every day. And, yeah. You know, I think that's, that's lovely to have relationships. And I can't think off the top of my head a bunch of girls I'm not cool with. Or if I saw them, I have to, do, like, that's, that's terrible, mm-hmm. you know, to have to mm-hmm. live like that. So, well, that's the thing because I feel like in the, a lot of those situations, sometimes you have that hoping to get back together yeah. or hoping to, like, you know, rekindle that. And so that's why I feel like is the dangerous part about staying friends with the ex is yeah. because like maybe you guys do rekindle later down the line and it's like y'all were meant to not be in each other's lives, like Who in any that? capacity. Who said that? You don't. <laughs> I'm speaking from personal experience. Like you, uh, you done tried it a couple of times and Well, the thing is I thought I could be friends with an ex, right? Mm-hmm. You have history with somebody, they know things about you, but ultimately that connection needs to be ended yeah, after it's too strong. it doesn't it's work. too strong yeah you know, so just just because yeah. i feel like it's either platonic friendship or romantic and if i have had you in my life in a romantic way i'm not gonna be able to see you as a friend like that's real i'm not gonna be even able if to, you move on even like if you i move, you on, move on you don't think you yeah. could be cool with somebody you moved on from and you made the decision like you know what it's not working. That's out. hard. That's hard. I, in theory, it sounds great. It's easier said than done. But personally, I haven't had a situation like that. Like yeah. I'm not really friends with any of my exes. I don't think it's as as uh, as regular as people would like to assume it is. Like it's not a normal thing to be like friends. To be cordial or ca- and, and and cool with each other is one thing. But like friends and still going out, uh, I've never done that. I mean, I have, but with intention behind mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Of not being friends for real. Yeah. (laughs) That makes sense. So what about if somebody is, um, what if they like, they get into a new relationship? Are you cool with somebody you're dating being friends with the next? Wait, am I cool with like my, yeah, I'm dating being cool with her Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like. You don't care. What if they like hang out all the time? Like you knew they were in a five year relationship and they still hang out regularly. They go get lunch. They go to the movies occasionally because they friends, you know? Is I that think, cool I think of it like this. Like, if I'm rocking with you, right, and I got to second guess everybody you kicking it with because they're of the opposite gender, it's like, I'm not really going to kick it with you. If I got to second guess what you're telling me and if you're... That's exhausting <laughs> thinking about. I'm trusting whatever you say. Yeah. I'm not going to look up and see if you're telling the truth. You tell me you're somewhere. I'm assuming you're there. I'm not going to worry, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Too so much. for the record, you cool with it then? Yeah, be cool with your ex. Like, okay. All right, that's a good perspective. Invite too. him to dinner. He got to bring something. <laughs> yeah. Bring his girl or whoever. Like, I've done that. Like, I've 
Invited me to dinner? You've been on a date with a girl and her ex before? Like a function. Okay. Now, I've thrown stuff in my crib or something before, and it's like, bring your man. It's not... Now, if I told you not to bring your man, you should be worried. Like, bring your man, have him eat, relax, smoke mm-hmm, with the homies. Mm-hmm. It's not that deep to me, like, yeah. you know. But if I was still attached, I wouldn't do that, obviously. Yeah. You know? And also, you you seem confident. You seem like a confident guy. Yeah, you for know? the most part. Nothing to worry about, for the most part. I'm not tripping. If it happens, <laughs> it happens. I'm not going to beat myself up. Yeah. I mean, you hey, know? that's a confident reality to have, a confident mindset to Why have. Not? There's so many dudes out here and so many girls out here. Like, if you're worrying about everybody, it's like... Yeah. Do you There's have a, a lot of like female friends in general? Yeah. 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 Is that something that like people um like that you've noticed like affects your relationships with women when they're trying to get to know you? Like, damn, he has a lot of female friends. No, because you can uh, come kick it with him. If I have something <laughs> I with the crib or we well but you can have a conversation with him. I'm not gonna tell you like if, if I'm having something, I'm like, I'm, everybody's coming out. I don't care who if I tell you to come, come. If you're uncomfortable with coming, don't come. But I'm not going to hide and not have fun and not be myself. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I, it's just... But I've always been like that. I, I went to a fraternity, so we always had to work with the sororities and help them to do, do this, and they helped us do that. So I was able to build up a mentality of I can be around a bunch of beautiful women and not be dating any of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because when I wasn't like that, it was so much drama. Yeah. And once I just it was like, yo, beautiful women want to kick it, drink, smoke, eat, have good music, enjoy themselves, not worrying about a dude being creepy, trying to, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you can come to Ye's house and kick it and have a great time. <laughs> you you can't Ye's go to certain house. other artist's crib. It's going to be uncomfortable. There's no food there. It's cold. Okay. Okay. They what? ain't give you water. <laughs> you eat lamb chops at the crib with your homegirl at 4 a.m. wondering how you had such an amazing time. It's not. A, it's, I know a lot of art, and girls don't say that mm-hmm, about them. Mm-hmm. It's like People it's a competition of who can. Nah, it's not like that with you. It's nah, different nah. over Just there. Enjoy, I'm trying to. I'm trying to have everybody like connect, okay. and enjoy themselves. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so you just everybody get along vibes. Okay, Very I, I, I've been like that for most of my life. Like, yeah, it's never been so and so's fighting over. It's never mm-hmm, mm-hmm. once or twice. But not like any real shit, like yeah. So, so where does the inspiration for some of your music come from? Because I know for people who are listening who don't know, Gayali, he does a bunch of music. Um, He's a singer, R and B artist. He writes. He does it all. So, where does that like inspiration come from? It seems like you don't deal with any toxicity. You know, you have good vibes all around you all the time. Like, what inspires the music? I used to not be shit, so a lot of those experiences, like, in college, like, that was my time to be wild, like, and figure it out, and I did, and so I figured it out before I got to L.A., to when when I got to L.A., I wasn't as enticed by, like, the craziness. I had already experienced so much stuff in college that I could write about, had great relationships in school, like, my first ever real relationships we're in college, you know, I'm mm-hmm. a late bloomer and stuff. So that was like my time to, that was like my high school to yeah. going to college. Like I was so in my shell up until college that it was like, oh shit. What does used to not be shit mean though? Um, I wasn't honest. I would date multiple girls who were cool with each other. Mm. Same sorority. Yeah. Um, all type of stuff. Uh, not caring about proximity. Oh, yeah, I but I was in school. I was just, <laughs> you know, I was like aimless. And once I became an artist, I kind of decided to move differently because I didn't want to have a stigma and like a bunch of stories. It's like I'm, I've moved so well as an artist mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. I wouldn't have done it like this if I didn't wild out before. Yeah. Okay. Interesting, though. I feel like being an artist, you know, that's the one kind of career where people let it slide like people kind of let it get away with it what you mean in terms of just you like know the artists let this slide yeah like not being shit in terms of like you know talking to the same mean, girls in different and same groups and just like i don't know you gotta have people to check you though like i'm still my close friends still my 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 homies from day one so they will always tell me when i was you know off the track or whatever but Gotta have friends like that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like I get my inspiration just through the past, and you know, it's easy to just tap into it when I'm working. You know. Mhm. Mhm. Okay. Um. I mean, that's a good mentality to have. You gotta be friends with 
of your exes and people that you used to date because the industry is small, but also it's so small. the world is small. You so know? small, you know? Yeah, That's so you don't reason, always, like, there's a chance you're going to run a, like run across them in a personal setting, so that you have to be cordial. What about in general when it comes to like, um, let's say somebody did you dirty. Yeah. You still want to be cool with them after that, like knowing that you have to see them around or like, are you the type of person that will just like give people the cold shoulder? Like, how do you handle that? I'm like, I'm what they call um, productively petty. So if you fuck me over, I'm going to do something good in your life so that you have to give me credit for it. So that you have to pay me or da 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 da. Productively petty. So I'm going to get at you in a in a way that we all win. And the only loser of it is you knowing that, oh, he did something great for me and I tried to fuck him over. But you think I'm doing it for you because I fuck with you. No, I'm doing it because I fuck with me. Mm. <laughs> and you and that you winning is just it just happens to happen when I win. So I'm not gonna dwell on it and let something bad it's like i'm gonna see how i can benefit your life so you're gonna have to address that Mm, that's a very i don't think i've ever heard anyone say that before like if you said if somebody does you dirty i'm gonna do something for you so that you win like for artists play with me right yeah i said i hear you say something Mm -hmm. a girl tell me yo my this this and i see the screenshot i'm like why would he say that he saw me he never said that so what i'm gonna do is I'm going to find out what label you sign with. Find out all your producers. I'm going to follow all of them. See who needs samples and loops. I'm going to send it to him. And then he's going to hit me when your album comes and I got a placement. And now you got to figure out if you're going to post that song or not. <laughs> that's what that's that's the type of shit I would do. Nobody you lost. Everybody fuck. won. Everybody in that situation I named, nobody lost. And you won. Except ego-wise. Yeah. Someone's ego might be bruised. But other than that, everybody won and everybody benefited. That's a good scenario. Does this I used to you? not do that. It used to be worse shit. But... When you mature, you try to... And when you mature, you, know, you just don't have time to like do, nah. be doing shit that... Go, to go out of your way and be petty or to sabotage or to, back. you know, not deal with somebody because of X, Y, and Z. It's just life is too short. We don't got enough time. And like you said, we're here to be productive. Yeah. yeah. And petty a little bit. And be a little petty just a little bit. <laughs> what's, what's your sign? Because you sound like a... What I sound like? You sound like a Gemini. Dang. You Are you a Gemini? Read. May 21st. You like, are? Mm-hmm. I just read him. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I didn't know I knew that. he was going to say that. I knew he was going to say that. You do give me Gemini vibes. I get only, it. Only because you have that two-side factor to you <laughs> of, like, the, you know, positive and, like, mm-hmm. good. And then there's, like, the toxic, evil, sneaky <laughs> vibes. <laughs> for sure but now I got both sides on the same accord like we're on the same page both yeah, sides. yeah yeah so, yeah okay interesting I like that you said that you're productively petty I wish I could think more of that way but my thing is if like to bring it back to being friends with the ex mm-hmm. um, I'm not doing shit for you once things have ended <laughs> Like, I just feel like, okay, you've benefited long enough. Like, I was in a situation where, you know, I was, I felt like I was being used for my resources or Mm. used for certain connections. And um, once that ended, I saw that, you know, it's like you have these rose colored glasses that make you see people in this light that make you want to help them while you're dating them. But as soon as it ended, I was like, wow, like, you're never benefiting off of me again. You ain't peeping, like, was he up? I mean, kind of, like, I did, but I just thought that this was a common practice mm-hmm. of, like, helping people that you're with. He never looked out for you? He never gave you a, he never mm-hmm. went out his way to, like, yo, I'm going to make sure she know I got value outside of what she I, knows I do and what she does. I mean, to be honest, no, that's no. Cr- that's sad. Like, looking back on it, no. And I, and the thing is, it's like a perceived value of like the emotional intimacy. So like I learned this the other day, but it's called love bombing when somebody Bruh, just I just learned that. Term yeah, too. it's like a thing, right? So when somebody showers you with all this love, attention, affection, like in the really early, early stages of you guys talking or getting to know each other, it makes it seem like things are progressing fast, like, you know, that this is going somewhere. But what they're it's like a form of manipulation where they're literally telling you all these things so that, you know, they think that you like or you think that they like you and that they're willing to do anything for you. And it's just it's so an illusion. Where, where did you find this, man? 
Where? Like, did he find you? Did he seek you out? Like, how did he yes, get to he you? Yes, he sought me out. He, I mean... We met on Instagram, like. He bagged you on the girl. <laughs> <laughs> we met on Instagram, but we had been following each other for girl. a minute, and so we had went to dinner one day, and just like the vibes were there, like it just kind of yeah. hit it off, and um, yeah, I don't know, it was just I didn't see it at first, I didn't see all the signs, and I talk about this in like other episodes too, but you know, it was just user vibes from the jump, but somebody like that. Even though he wasn't my boyfriend, we were casually dating for like four or five months. Um, I couldn't be friends with just because I see now looking back on it that like his intent was never there. Like we didn't have a solid friendship to begin with, even though we have history, even though it's like it didn't work out for, you know, reasons. Mm. You cut it off? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a complicated story. <laughs> It's still not going as, on. It's, no, 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 no. It's right. not going on. It's, I ain't no judgment. Um, no. It's just not as black and white because I felt like, um, you know, when things ended, I did want to maintain a friendship because he was also somebody who worked in the industry. And so my mentality was like, well, I don't want to run into you anywhere and us be cool. I, 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 I mean, beef, yeah. us be like beefing or it be weird because I hate weird vibes right. in situations like that. Like, I just want to be cool. I want to say what's up, and I don't want it to be like we don't know each other. Kind How do you of thing. feel when you did you tell him that? How do you, um, or like, do you say you want? I want to be cool still. Or? Well, I mean, I did say like you know it's all love, like <laughs> <laughs> it's all love. It's, it's no love. hard yeah. feelings on my end. Um, but you know, respectfully, this is like not what I want. This isn't gonna work out, and it is what it is. Like, don't ask me for nothing. <laughs> Wait, so he would just ask, like, what you mean? Though? Like, like he would ask me for, he didn't have a car, number one. I know, I know. He wouldn't ask I for know. the whip. No, but he would ask me to, like, take him places. And get you gas money? Sometimes. sometimes. Like, sometimes not even just he because. He would pump the gas at least, right? Sometimes. <gasps> sometimes? <laughs> it's so embarrassing <laughs> to talk about. Yes, but honestly, yeah, like, I don't know what was going on at the time, but. It was just a lot of things that I felt like this is how it's supposed to be. Like, mm. I don't know. No, nah, I, I was that, It makes sense. Nah, it makes sense though. Cause you, <laughs> nah, trust me. I, yeah. It ain't you. We all been there. <laughs> yeah. We all been there. You know, I, I would hope so. But yeah. the thing is, is like, I do feel if you have a genuine platonic friendship with somebody and then things turn romantic, I don't think there's a way for you to go back to being platonic friends. Not. Not as pure as it was, for sure, for sure, nah. Mm, yeah. For real. No, it's not. What about, like, when men and women being platonic friends? Is that something that you feel like... I know this is a hot topic sometimes of just, like, some people say it's not a thing at all. Like, you can't be platonic friends. I've done it, but I think circumstance f made it easier for it to be platonic. Mm-hmm. Like, like what? Like if my homie thing? dates a girl, I will never, ever, ever, never, ever in my life take a shot at her. I don't care how bad she is. I don't care how brief it was. Just because I know how emotional men are. Mm. And they will never tell you until it gets to the point where they're just being emotional. And I get some of the homies will never tell me how they really feel. So to nip that in the bud, I won't even... I, I, I know you, so I won't even... You know, mm -hmm. um, that's good. That means you loyal. I've it's definitely too many people out there to be chasing after your homies. Man, you, know you would think so. I, you would think so. I've definitely had dudes that try to talk to me and then literally go and talk to my best friend or go and try and talk to my best friend, not knowing <laughs> we talk about all of We're this. We're talking about you right now. Like I'm with her. Right. <laughs> We're looking at your profile. We're looking like, and we're laughing to, at you. It happens to us too, though. Like I work with producers, and artists, and. Home, I already know what this means. Hey, bro, he got his phone in his hand. He said, hey, bro, he about to do this. And turn it around. I'm like, what's up with her? I'd be like. <laughs> but my homies don't care. They'll be like, man, you still talking to her? I'm like, why? Why would you ask? But I feel you, but I'm not. But I get it. Like, I'm different. I'm not going to be like, don't talk to her. I'm mm -hmm. like, bro. Yeah, feel, I mean, feel free to shoot your shot. You never know. You can't. You can't. I mean, yeah. In you can't this put restrictions on people's shit. It just exists. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can be cool with you, <laughs> knowing you dated my homie, and knowing we'd never cross any boundaries 
because of just the respect I have for my bro. Even though y'all might not be cool anymore, we can be friends just because I just would never cross that boundary with you. Mm-hmm. You know, so for instance, sometimes that circumstance makes it easier to be platonic. Or if I'm not attracted to you, that's anybody. If we're not attracted to each other. It's easy to be platonic. You no, know, it's be, we're human. You feel <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you are attractive and you do unattractive shit, it's even mu- even easier. You're like, oh, that's the, that's the sis. That's the bro. Like, it's, somebody might tell you too much about themselves. You're like, oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't look at you like that. Yeah. It's perfect. You know? So I just it just depends on the person. Some people are just too thirsty. Okay. And got to hit everything moving. But it's cool <laughs> to be friends. Like, <laughs> it's cool to be friends. It's possible. Talk about the benefits of having just a platonic friendship of the opposite sex in your life. Because I feel like that really goes a long way. I mean, they're not going to hold back. They're going to tell you when you ask them advice, just the real shit you need to hear, you know? Especially if you're asking love advice. My homegirls always are going to be like, nine times out of ten, they're going to side with the girl. Mm-hmm. And I know they are. I just want them to like guide me. Like, what should I do? Like, yeah. And so like the, the homegirls I made in college, they taught me the same way they did when I was a freshman. It's like, stop. <laughs> like, they'll just... And I'm like, nobody talks to me like that but y'all. Yeah. And, you know, so I, the benefits are just brute honesty. And you got a plus one. Like, if that's my my dog, I could pop out with my homegirl for a plus one if I need to. Yeah. Knowing that the perception is, I wonder if them, like, but yeah. not with us. I'm like, I get it. She, guys are looking at me like, is that her boyfriend? No, and I'm facts. like, that's my dog. But y'all don't. Y'all don't need to know that. We're having a good time. So also, a good friend could just accompany you, be a wingman, it's just like you have a good time. Yeah. It doesn't always have to be your bro. You know exactly. what I'm saying? It could be the bro, the, yeah, the homegirl, all the Female perspectives in your life. I'm not, I'm not trying to hang out with dudes all day. I'm not going to lie. Like My homegirls pull up once or twice a week. We cook, watch TV, talk shit, smoke weed. They tell me about their love life and their job. And we just, it's, you know? Yeah. Guys, it's... We got a few topics we stick to all the time. It gets boring and redundant. It's like, I want to talk about some real shit sometimes and, you know, not have to put on a macho shit because the homies and, you know, you just yeah. like, you want to just That's real. be comforted. And sometimes it's easier to talk about real shit with a the woman. The feminine energy in the room. Yes. That's, a, that's definitely a real thing. Um you need like different opinions too, like you said. Like I'll ask my male friends for dating advice, but the difference is also too is like, I'm only doing that, like, we're only friends <laughs> because it's platonic. Like, right, right, right. nothing more. <laughs> nothing could possibly happen. <laughs> nothing could possibly happen, and I'm very careful about you that. You gotta be. You gotta I'm be. I'm very careful about that. Like, I, yeah, yeah. Because you have to be, because men, men will also hide their intentions. That's what I'm saying. That's another thing. You were talking about platonic friendships in the beginning. It's like, somebody will make it seem like y'all cool because they think you're an option. But as soon as you're not an option... Or I've had it happen to where I'm like, oh, she cool. She just want to be cool. And then she might be dating a dude and then stop talking to me. And then want to talk to me again when she stops. I'm like, if we're cool, you don't have to stop talking because yeah, you're yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought we were friends. That just let me know that you were, you had motives and it's cool. <laughs> and guys do that too. It's like, to be besties and like, you know, we've been knowing each other. I'm like, why would you tell her that, dog? You've been cool with her for so long. And like, why would you, t- you know, why would you fuck it up? You know? Yeah, so you think that messes it up? You think Hell it just, yeah. all chances are gone? You still might be cool with that person. Like, oh, you know, I would just friend. It's never going to be the same. <laughs> like, yeah. don't do it. Yeah. So once you friend zone yourself, it's pretty much done for. I love friend zoning myself. How do you friend zone yourself? Out the gate. You got to do it out the gate. You got to yeah. cut it. You got to, like, working with artists, I have to friend zone myself. Mm-hmm. I got to make sure they know, like, I'm not, I'm here to make music. I'm here to be the homie. Like, I'm not that other producer. I'm not that other artist. Mm-hmm. Like, I get what happens, and, you know, but this isn't that. And so, Making women comfortable in that way applied to life as well. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, got to be someone people can trust and like be comfortable. Yeah, around. just don't and be so, a creep because there's a bunch it's of. It's easy to not to be, but I is people get so many opportunities to be it's through relationships. Like yeah. I could do something for you. Yeah. So let's be friends. Yeah, and you hear about let's that. Be friends. I come to my crib. All the time. Yeah. Come to my friend. You know, and it's like, damn, I thought we was cool, and you tried right. some shit. Right. And, right. You know, so. It's like the hidden agenda of, do you yeah. really want to be cool with me? Do you want something out of me? Or are you just trying to date, you know? Like, you just trying to 
do other yeah, things. Yeah, you waiting around, <laughs> you trying to, you know. Like you're looking for an opportunity to kind of capitalize on. And that's the one thing, you know, I've, I've noticed about the industry in general when it comes to just being platonic friends with men. <laughs> it don't be working. <laughs> it's just, it's like the weirdest thing, you know. It work with us though. Yeah, no, for sure. I do have a lot of platonic friends, but I'm saying in terms of like not knowing people's yeah. intentions. That's yeah. Right out the gate, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just it's something difficult sometimes. A lot of women have to deal with, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. I'll be hearing. And then, and then I've seen stories too where, um, like I've seen a producer hold a girl's stems because she wouldn't on. Um, on a, I saw that. Yeah, like that's crazy. Holding it for ransom, essentially. I had that happen before with a artist I was working with. The engineer wouldn't give her her files back, and he wanted her to pull up and get them. Yeah. So me and my dude intercepted. Like, nah, we gonna pull up, and you know what I'm saying? She was like, he made me uncomfortable, and he, we thought he was cool until I guess they had a session that we weren't there. Mm-hmm. He got, he didn't do anything. He's, what he was saying was like weird, and mm-hmm. she was, you know. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, "Oh, it's my, it's my song." And yeah, yeah. I'm like, "Dude, you just butt hurt, shit, you, you know." Yeah, no, for real. The butt hurtness and the egos definitely play a role in terms of how they You'd be um surprised. Man. Yeah, no, you wouldn't be surprised, but no, nah, I just would be think surprised. the more people talk yeah. about it, the more hopefully you know it can get exposed and get to the point where like we're hopefully. yeah not doing all that. Yeah, no, I just want people to stop being weird in the studio. Let people be <laughs> platonic friends, okay? Just, we yeah. don't got to date. We don't got to do anything. Like, let's just straight to the point. Or if we want to be friends, be friends, and that's it. Like, yeah. don't have an ulterior motive. Or if you do have one, like, be upfront about that. Be upfront about the motives. Be upfront about the motives, yeah. So with your latest project, you know, mm-hmm. that just came out, I definitely want to talk about the music a little bit. Yeah. Um, tell me about, like, the inspiration behind it and, yeah, what went yeah. into that. So uh, Private Suite 4 out now. It's my fourth installment. So the series started back in, like, 2015. So it's when I was homeless and I saved up enough money and I stayed at the SLS for a weekend. And I made a project and I dropped the project and then my life, it just never was the same and, you know, shit start going up and so it's very like sacred to me like when i get in that mode it's just fun to release it and yeah it was i can't believe mm-hmm. it's the fourth one so yeah i had a lot of fun the reception has been great so what was like the main message that you wanted people to take away from it with those projects i always put a lot of music on there like rap we did afro beats r&b mm-hmm. different vibes for it's sure. like the for an artist it's hard to be your complete self because there's so many parts so doing it on a project, I just wanted to give people a little bit of everything that I could do. And it's just, it's like hitting the gym. It's like sweating it all out and just, yeah. that, that's how good it feels. Because some projects, you condense it and you stick with one sound and it's great. But this one, I just got to be my, my myself all the way. So mm. I, just I feel like that's, that. you know, the most of the vibes with your music is very authentic to like who you are and what you do. You. Yeah. Um, how do you feel like this project has shown your growth from the last few that you released to mm-hmm. this one? I would say subject matter. Um, we got a song that's called Autumn's Here and that's that one's going crazy. But it's a rap song. It's more just introspective stuff about... I used to work at this car dealership in LA and I was just like seeing like certain artists. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, I'm gonna work with him one day and just, and then telling that guy the story when I meet him and write with him and do a song with him. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I almost sold you a car one time. So, you know, that song was just about to come up and yeah. a lot of people don't get those snapshots if they haven't been with me the whole time. They see the Chris Brown, Jack Hart, they see the stuff that's, that looks fun and looks like I'm up. But they didn't. They didn't see the the tough part, and so it's fun to speak about those times because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it keeps you grounded. You yeah, know? and it reminds you too how far you have came. You know, mm-hmm. from when you first started your journey. Definitely. If there was one song you could recommend on there for somebody listening to this podcast, yeah. what song would you recommend that they listen to if um, you know they want some some love R and B vibes? So the song to listen to is called Cam Girl. It's about what you think it's about. So that's the one you go to first. <laughs> if you never heard me, just click on Cam Girl. And then. Okay, let him yeah. know what you think of Cam Girl, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we go, I just want to say thank you for coming to show some love on the thank podcast. Thank you. I had to show some love. Of course. Yeah. Um, this was a great topic. I feel like, you know, we learned a lot about you and where you yeah. stand on being friends. <laughs> he just wants the vibes to be good. So I could respect that. Yeah, because I kick everybody out. I kick everybody out the house. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, everybody got to go if the vibes everybody ain't gotta good. Everybody got to go, man. Facts. But okay, so we covered um, being friends with your ex. Can men and women really be friends with each other? And to stop being weird in the studio. So <laughs> I can't wait till like in a hundred years, I guarantee they're still talking about the same shit. Niggas are still going to be not. weird in the studio. I hope not. You're still I, not going to be able to be friends all the way. I feel like they've been talking about this for a long time. They have, but I think with, with right. social media, these conversations, right. they need to be had. So if <laughs> people, do. you know, share your stories, like don't be afraid to speak out on <laughs> what happens and don't be afraid to friend zone somebody quick. Facts. Okay. Fellas, put people in their it. place. You deserve it. Yes. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you guys tap in, show some love. Let us know in the comments if you think that you could be friends with an ex, if it's possible, okay? Or if not. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. As always, thank you for tuning in. I'm thank your girl, Tally, and this is Yali. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>